Assalamu alaikum dear students today we are going to learn about liquid limit determination and plasticity index of clay soil it's week number 9 and lecture number 18 of geotechnical engineering 1 of BE civil engineering program so let's begin as you know, we discussed in previous lecture about Atterberg limits and we learned that the Atterberg limits basically refer to the limits which are given by a Swedish agriculture engineer Albert Atterberg to the various states of the soils in which the soil can exist depending on its moisture content. So as you know that if you add a lot of water to soil, the soil consistency will become zero or very very less which means that it will have very little to no resistance to the deformation. So if we apply deformation, the resistance or shear stresses or shear strength offered by the soil in this case will be equal to zero. So your stress strain curve will be a flat line along the x-axis. Then if you keep on reducing the moisture content of clay soil, you see the clay becomes harder and further harder if you reduce the moisture content. So that clearly indicates that if you change the moisture content or amount of water present in a clay soil, it is going to affect its behavior a lot. So Atterberg divided these states into a various limits called liquid state, plastic state, semi-solid state and solid state and he mentioned that in liquid state the soil will have zero consistency that is zero is the resistance towards the shear stress while on plastic and semi-solid and moving towards the solid state in which we will be reducing the moisture content of the soil the behavior of the soil will be different and the shear stress resistance will be increased as well. So these states were known as liquid state, plastic state, semi-solid state and solid state. He further mentioned that if the soil is going to change from one state to another there will be point at which it will be changing its behavior and those were identified as limits of the various states. So if the soil is going to, if you are keeping on reducing the moisture content of the soil, if the soil is in liquid state, there will be a point at which it will change from liquid to plastic state, which is referred to a liquid limit of the soil and we have already determined this in our previous class. Casagrande method and cone penetration method was used in that case to determine the liquid limit. Now, if your soil is in plastic state in which you can mold the soil into a thread or make a pottery from it, you know the soil, the clay soil, they possess this plastic behavior. So you can mold them. But if you keep on reducing the moisture content of clay soil further, there will be a point at which this soil will start crumbling. Okay, it will start developing cracks as you can see over here. So which indicates that the soil is changing uh, its behavior from plastic to semi-solid state. So the point at which or the moisture content at which it is going to change this behavior that moisture content will be referred to as plastic limit for that particular soil. 
and that is what we are going to learn today how to determine this plastic limit so the plastic limit will be a limit at which our soil will start developing cracks upon molding okay so that is why the moisture content at this point will be the plastic limit for this soil which means that this is the limitation of its plastic state so after this is after you reduce the further the moisture content of this particular soil its plastic behavior will be no more and the soil will be in semi solid state because obviously in that case if you are molding it it will start developing cracking so something which is plastic it should be able to be molded it should not develop any crack so its plastic behavior is limiting or ending at this point that's why we call it plastic limit okay so this is the limit of the plastic condition so why do we have plastic state in a soil plasticity is because of the clay minerals present in clay soil okay uh, as we discussed in our soil mineralogy you know that clay minerals possess negative charge all right so when they are negatively charged they attract the bipolar water molecule so this is water molecule which is being attracted by this clay so water molecule are bipolar it means that they have got a positively charged surface and a negatively charged surface so because the surface of the clay is negatively charged it will attract the positively charged end of the water molecule towards itself so that is why the clay soil has affinity to absorb a lot of water on contrary to the sands and gravels <coughs> now when this water is present between the molecules of clay which you can see over here the blue indicates the water it separates the clay particles from each other which you can see over here so when the clay particles are separated from each other and if the force is applied because of the separation provided by the water they can slide past each other Okay, so if you apply the force, these particles they can slide over each other. And once this force is removed because they have deformed permanently, they will not come back to their original position. So the deformation will be irreversible, which means that they are plastic. As you know from your previous knowledge, which you have learned in engineering mechanics or mechanics of materials. that the deformations which are irrecoverable or irreversible okay if you apply a force something and it deforms and it does not come back to its original state that is known as irreversible or permanent deformation so permanent deformation is known as plastic deformation while if you apply force on something like if you take a tennis ball and if you compress it it will deform but if you leave it it will come back to its original shape and that will be known as non permanent deformation or elastic deformation so because in clay soil under the plastic condition you have got irreversible deformations so the condition is known as plastic state all right and that is why when you put some water in a clay soil and make some shapes some toys some pottery some pot with that it maintains that shape it does not come back to its original conditions so the deformation in that remains plastic that is permanent that is why it is called plastic state now in plastic state as i discussed the soil can be rolled into a thread okay without developing any crack it can be molded to make pottery which you can see over here very good uh, number of things are made from the clay you see uh, 
number of ornaments are made, number of uh, pottery is made, etc. Uh, even the tiles are made sometimes and then they are cooked later on. The bricks are made from that. Uh, and in all cases, you see that the clay is not in dry state while they are doing it. They put some water into it, bring it into a plastic state and then mold them. Alright? So, while the soil is in plastic state, it can be molded into a thread or any pot, etc. But if you keep on reducing the moisture content of the soil, there will be a point that at which it cannot be molded. And upon molding, it will start developing cracks. So this will be the point in which it is going to become like this from this that limit will be known as plastic limit. So that moisture content will be a uh, moisture content referring to the plastic limit of the soil. So beyond this limit if you keep on reducing the moisture content at this point it will become it will it will uh, uh, make a transition from a plastic state to semi solid state. So this moisture content will be known as plastic limit. Okay? So, for the sake of standard over here, we will just standardize it and use uh, some standard procedure over here for de determination. So, the experiment which you are going to perform in the laboratory will work on the principle that soil in the plastic state can be molded uh, into a threads without cracking. Okay? So, if the soil is plastic, if you are making a thread out of it, it should be able to make a thread and it should be able to give you a thread without being breaking uh, or developing cracks. Okay. So the standard method which is being used is ASTM D4318. Uh, I will also provide you the standard on suit portal. You can download it. So in this the standard uh, apparatus used, the standard procedures, uh, the reporting format, precautions etc. Everything is given in this document. And you will be following these guidelines, ASTM guidelines, to perform the experiment in the laboratory as well. So, according to this ASTM standard, for this test, you require sieve number 40, uh, which is 425 micron sieve. Uh, you will require glass plate uh, with spatula, some containers, uh, some dishes in which you can place the clay soil and mix it with water uh, and you will probably require a standard uh, bar over here which will be the of a uh, 3.2 mm diameter so when you are making a thread you can compare it with this standard so this diameter of this uh, steel bar will be 3.2 millimeter so if you make a thread you will compare its dia with this steel bar and if they are the, uh, the same diameter it means that it is at 3.2 millimeter. Sometimes on some glass plates you have got guidelines as well like there will be two lines running across this glass plate which will be 3.2 millimeter apart. So if you are rolling the thread uh, just like you can see over here they are rolling the thread on uh, this glass plate on this there will be two marks over here which will be separated by 3.2 millimeter so they will basically tell you that if your thread is now 3.2 millimeter because in this test you will be uh, rolling the soil into a thread of 3.2 millimeter and see that if the soil is going to crack or not also there is a plastic limit rolling device as well sometimes being used uh, but it is optional you can do the hand rolling as well or you can do the rolling with this device as well. So both are basically standard. So the test procedure, first of all you will have to dry and pulverize the soil. So take a soil sample, dry it and pulverize it using the hammer uh, into small pieces uh, if there are some lumps in it. Okay. Then pass it to sieve number 40, which is 425 micron sieve. The material which has passed through the sieve, add moisture into it. 
using wash bottle and then bring it to a molding state and make a balls from it like this round balls okay so uh, the ball should be of the size which will can be fit into your palm easily so they will want not be a very big or small balls okay so when you perform experiment in the laboratory we will discuss that in detail how much should be the size of the ball so start rolling this ball with your hand on the glass plate into a thread okay and you will have metallic rod for a reference which will be 3.2 millimeter dia or you will have marks on the glass plate showing you 3.2 millimeter so you will start rolling the thread and see that if it is going to crumble when it reaches 3.2 millimeter if it does not crumble it means that its moisture content is still higher so what you will do you will keep on rolling it uh, take it in your hand uh, keep on molding it around in your hand and then start rolling again uh, to reduce its moisture content okay but if it's crumble if it's going to crumble before that then it means that the moisture content is still less than the plastic limit so you will add some more moisture into the sample so when you are making a thread and it the thread just reaches 3.2 mm in diameter and it starts crumbling so the length of the thread will be about 10 cm and the diameter will be 3 mm so if it just starts crumbling a 3.2 mm starts showing some cracks then the cracks will be like this which you can see over here this is uncracked and this there is there are no cracks but in this you can see there are cracks so if it just starts showing cracks at 3.2 mm then it means that the soil is now at the plastic limit take the thread put it in container take a weight of container and then put the thread in and put it in a uh, container take a weight of container plus wet soil and then weight of container pl of of plus dry soil by drawing it in oven for 24 hours uh, so that will basically give you the moisture content as well so repeat the test three times okay and take an average so you'll have three uh, test being conducted with the same procedure and then you will take average of three okay so from three test you will get like the values close to each other maybe from one test you will get 15 percent from another 16 percent and from another you may get 13 or 14 percent so you will just add them together divide by three so that will be your the moisture content the plastic limit for the particular soil now previously we discussed about the liquid limit and we said that the, it's, uh, it's the limit at which the soil will stop behaving as a liquid and turn into a plastic and then today we discuss about plastic limit in which we discuss that uh, this is the limit at which you further reduce the moisture content and the soil will stop behaving as a plastic soil and turn into a semi solid so what is the purpose over here the purpose over here is to determine the plasticity index okay it not only tells you that if your particular soil is going to turn into liquid or plastic early with less moisture or high moisture but it also tells you about the plasticity of the soil as well that how much the particular clay is plastic you see you have got clays uh, in various regions you cannot make pottery or pot or toys with from all the clays okay you can only make it with a very highly plastic clays because they can be easily molded uh, there are clays which have got low plasticity index as well uh, because of the low clay content and in that case if you take that soil uh, it may be a clay soil but you cannot easily mold it it is not very plastic you cannot make a very good quality bricks with that as well sometimes so and that is why uh, it is important to determine the plasticity index to know that how much pi or how much plasticity a particular soil is going to have and that basically is uh, fundamental to Cressa Grande plasticity chart which is used for the uh, fine grain soil uh, classification we will discuss that later on in much detail in the soil classification system 
uh, and unified soil classification system will be using cathagenide plasticity chart and that this pi value plasticity index value will be used to uh, determine if the clay is highly plastic clay or medium or low plasticity clay or non plastic clay as well in some cases so pi pi or plasticity index is a very very important property which can be simply calculated with uh, subtracting plastic limit from a liquid limit of the soil so liquid limit will be usually higher for a particular soil than a plastic limit first that the soil will become plastic then you if you keep on increasing the moisture of the soil becomes liquid so that is why it's liquid limit minus the plastic limit uh, so liquid limit we determined in the previous class and today we are discussing the plastic limit so if you have the both value you can determine the plasticity index of a particular soil uh, over here for some typical clays which we have already studied kaolinite elite montmorillonite you know in clay mineralogy we discuss these soils in detail in their liquid and plastic limits are given okay and you can see over here kaolinite has got very uh, less liquid and plastic limit so it is not very easily moldable soil compared to elite montmorillonite uh, then we have halosite uh, hydrated, dehydrated, atapuljite, which are basically uh, uh, the needle sharp shaped clay particles, um, as I discussed in the previous classes. And then we have allophane, which have got usually the very high liquid and plastic limit, which you can see over here. Okay, so they are good for agriculture, these soils, but not very good for the construction, uh, the ones which got very, very high liquid and plastic limit. So uh, these parameters will give us a very good idea uh, about a particular type of a clay being different from another clay soil in the soil classification. <coughs> so as I discussed previously that PI or plasticity index is simply your liquid limit <coughs> which is the moisture content at the liquid limit minus your plastic limit which is the moisture content at the plastic state. So, the more is the difference between these two states, the more will be their plasticity index. So, the difference of these both is basically Pi. Okay. So, over here on this scale you can see there is 0% moisture over here and if you keep on increasing the moisture you will reach from solid state of the soil to semi-solid, then plastic limit further there will be plastic state and then, then you will cross the liquid limit into a liquid state like this. So the more is the difference between this, it means that the soil will uh, have uh, more affinity to or more uh, range of a plastic state. So if the, this distance is larger, it will mean that the particular soil can remain plastic for a very large range of moisture content. Okay, so it will be highly plastic clay. So high PI value indicates that there is a large amount of water in a particular soil, which means in return that there is a large amount of clay content in a particular soil. So that is terms at highly plastic soil. So Burbister 1959 divided the soil in various plasticity groups based on their PI. So if you have particular soil PI is equal to zero, which means their plastic and liquid limits are same. Okay, so LL and PL are same, like this is 25%, this is 25%. So subtract both of them from each other. So if it is equal to zero, then it will be a non-plastic soil. So if it is between one to five, it will be slightly plastic. Five to 10, low plasticity clay. 10 to 20, medium plasticity soil. 20 to 40, high plasticity and greater than 40 is a very high plasticity soil or very high plasticity clay. So if you determine the PI of a particular soil, you will check it against the standard and uh, report it when you are doing the test in the field or in the laboratory, you will determine these parameters. So uh, you will be uh, required to report, uh, write in your report that if your soil which you have investigated is a high plasticity soil, low plasticity, medium plasticity. So you can basically determine it from here uh, that what type of soil you are dealing with. <coughs> now we are talking about the clay in the previous classes. What about the coarse grain soil like sands and gravels? 
So, because coarse grain soil cannot achieve plastic state, the reason is that their liquid limit and plastic limit are same. Okay, so when they will become liquid at the same time they become plastic as well. So if you keep on water, there will be no plastic state, they will directly turn into a liquid state. So there, there is no plastic state in case of the uh, coarse grain soil. Okay, so it directly goes into the liquid state, it means the liquid and plastic state are same. So if they have got same value, you, you know that the PI is equal to liquid minus plastic, but they are if they are the same, if they are one point, WOP and WL will be the same point. So from semi-solid it will directly turn into a liquid. So it means that WOP and WL is the same. So in that case, PI of this soil will be equal to zero. So it means the plasticity of coarse grain soil, sands and gravels are, uh, are equal to zero and that's why they are non-plastic. Also in some cases, plastic limit of the soil may be found to have in some special cases greater than liquid limit as well. So in all these conditions, if your PI value is equal to zero or negative, they will have to be considered as non-plastic soil and the PI will be considered as zero. Okay, so we will not take minus value of PI, we will only take it as zero or greater than one. So if the value is equal to zero or less than one, then it will indicate that the soil is non-plastic and its PI is equal to zero. While in organic soil like peats or some marshy soils, they have got very high plastic limit. Which means that if the plastic limit was going to be here, it is being shifted over here. So if the plastic limit of this soil was over here, you can see the PI will be in this range. Okay? But because they have got very high plastic limit, so WOP is shifted from here to here. So the liquid limit <coughs> usually uh, remains same for a particular type of clay. So WOP moves towards WL, so it means that the PI of the organic soil is very very less as well. So in case of organic soil, they also have very low PI. You commonly find the organic soils in marshy areas and the area. They are black cotton soil, very dark colored soils. So, and they are also not very good for the construction as well. So that is it uh, for today. We have learned today about how to determine the plastic limit. And then further we also discussed that how to determine plasticity index and how to use this uh, to distinguish a soil being a plastic, very high plastic, low plastic or non-plastic soil. In next class we will discuss uh, the last limit which uh, we have, are left with is a shrinkage limit and soil activity determination. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions please leave it at your suit portal. Thank you very much.